Please take your seats. We can get started. Good to see you. Okay then, as you can probably tell, I am not your regular history professor. Professor Lyman is out with the 24-hour Ebola that's going around. Be sure to send him your thoughts and prayers. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Professor Ree. I'm from the math department, and history is not my strong suit. But we are a bit short-staffed with all the 24-hour Ebola going around, so everyone's pitching in to help out with classes. I'll be handling your class today, and that way we can make sure that you're getting your money's worth on the degree that you so diligently work towards. Everyone with me so far? Okay, great. I'm not going to bother taking attendance. I know some of the class is out with the 24-hour Ebola going around, so we're just going to assume everyone is here, and for those who aren't, they can catch up online. All of these materials are available on your class website. You all already know how to do that. This is not your first rodeo, so we should probably get started. It looks like you're knee-deep in the American Revolution. Sounds like a fun time. Let's take a look at the slides that Professor Lyman left for us. Hmm, where's the file? Is anyone else having trouble connecting to the network? Maybe I have the wrong... No, that's right. Huh, that's not good. Hang on, let me send a quick text to IT. They can come figure out why this won't connect. Then we can get to work going through these slides. There we go. Hopefully it won't take long. So, how is everyone doing today? Really glad to see you're all masked up. If anyone needs disinfectant, I have a bottle up here. Please help yourself. Okay, IT says they can't come today. That's not helpful. Well then, I guess we can just talk about the American Revolution amongst ourselves. That'll be fun, right? Great. Let me just get comfortable here. Okay, so, the American Revolution. The time that the United States fought the British and took control of the country. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Great. So, the Americans were led by George Washington. He was a large man, very imposing. He had some dental issues, if I recall. That's too bad. But he still managed to lead the rebel army against the Redcoats. They, um... They had limited resources. There was a winter. And it was very cold, and people got hungry. There wasn't any food, because there were no snow plows to move the snow away. So the trucks with the food couldn't get there. So the rebel soldiers started eating each other. They started with the strongest and most muscular members of the group because they could feed the most people. Sure they did, it was an emergency. Wait, no, I think, I think they ate the horses, not each other. That was a different thing in a different snow situation, much later, other side of the country. Anyway, they were hungry and cold, that's what matters, and they ate their shoes too. Which turned out to be a bad idea because then their toes fell off from the hypothermia. Really just not a good situation all the way around. But the French hated the British, so they helped the American rebels. They sent baguettes and coffee, and also the Statue of Liberty, which was a strange choice, but you know, they're French. So they sent the statue, and it turned out to be a color-changing statue, like a mood ring. And the mood it was in was mostly angry. But that inspired the American troops to fight harder. What, do you have a question? Okay, what's your question? Yes, they did. The French were our allies, and they still are today. In fact, let me take this moment to teach a little tolerance and understanding. If you have a chance, get to know a French person. They're just like us in a lot of ways. Once you've talked to one for a while, you might even think they're human. It's pretty amazing. Where was I? Oh, right, the American troops, fighting against the British. So, there were traitors, of course, Americans who didn't want the revolution to succeed. The British promised riches and power and concubines and stuff to people who'd be willing to switch sides. Of course, many people wanted those rewards, so they tried to undermine the rebel army. One of those famous traitors was Benedict Cumberbatch. He was an officer who sold secrets to the Redcoats. He gave them information about troop movements, meal plans, 
factory grand openings and other vital details. He didn't get to enjoy the spoils of his treachery, though, because he was caught and hanged for treason in 1795. It took him approximately six hours to die, according to eyewitnesses. His body was left on display for 14 years as a lesson to anyone who would try to hurt the new American country. All that's left now is his jawbone, which is attached to the top of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. It's a symbol of how we have built our society on the bones of those who would oppose us. And of course, how we continue to do so. Just, just hold your questions for now. Okay, I'll be honest, the rebels should not have won the war. They got lucky because the British were fighting just about everyone else also, and they were spread really thin trying to control their vast empire. If there's one thing that holds true even today, it's that everyone hates the British. So, the rebels were able to push back against the tyranny of the empire, and in the end, they succeeded. Oh wait, Paul Revere. Can't forget about Paul Revere. Paul Revere is best known for being the male Sybil Luddington. If you don't know who Sybil Luddington is, she was a 16-year-old girl who rode all night to alert her father's troops of a British attack and get them all assembled to fight and push the Redcoats back. She rode triple the length of Paul Revere's ride. It was dark and raining at the time, and she managed to complete it and make it back safely to her home without getting captured. Paul Revere wasn't as effective as Sybil, but we can't all be that awesome. <sighs> What's your question? I'm going to answer that with a more blanket statement that I hope you will all take to heart. Anytime anything is discussed in class or in the reading assignments, anytime you do research or listen to a lecture, anytime something appears on a slide, you can safely assume it will be on the final. Everything ever will be on the final. Just expect that, and then you won't be unprepared when the time comes. Besides, the point of all this is learning, right? You're here to learn. You're paying a ridiculous amount of money to learn things, and it's my job to teach you those things. Usually those things are math, but today those things are history. You should be trying to learn as much as you possibly can from the resources you have available here so you get your money's worth for this education. Learn everything. Learn until your brain hurts. Speaking of which, I'm getting a headache. Now, what else do you need to know about the American Revolution? Hmm... You'll probably need to know the fashions of the time. That was a red coat, if you were a British soldier, of course. If you were American, you wore a variety of tailored jackets and skirts. The favored fabric was polyester, since it symbolized the American dream. Shoes had heels that ranged from 6 inches to 10 inches in height, which led to a rise in broken ankles. To have a broken ankle in revolutionary America was to be seen as someone of privilege, because you could clearly afford the best shoes. Let's see... When it came to everyday living, the masses mostly slept in huts or on rooftops, and they ate bread made from moldy cheese. It was surprisingly nutritious. The wealthy lived in palaces designed by the famous Scottish architect Seamus McMansion, and they ate carrier pigeons that were captured in battle. Their hobbies included needlepoint, fox hunting, bear baiting, and the occasional game of kick the pores. The masses mostly just watched TV for entertainment, as many people still do today. Medically, it was not a great time to be alive. Infections were common, antibiotics weren't a thing, and the smallpox vaccine was basically just having someone rub smallpox into one of your open wounds. Some doctors still believed that bleeding people was a cure for everything from consumption to the clap, most of them didn't bother to wash their hands before they would bleed you, and people had an average of 23 children because two-thirds were likely to die before the age of five. I hope you are all grateful to live in a time when modern medicine is actually useful in most cases. I know that I am. Right, okay, I think that's probably all you need to know about the American Revolution. I'm sure Professor Lyman can fill in the gaps when he gets back. Be sure to save all your questions for him. And again, this will all be on the final, so I hope you've been taking notes. Let your classmates know what they missed if you don't mind. Check the website for the slides from today's lecture, and hopefully I won't have to see any of you in this context ever again. Good? Great, you're dismissed. I know it's early, but I am very much done here. See some of you in linear algebra later, I hope you're prepared, because after this experience, I am more than ready to talk about something I actually know. Hey, sweetness. Special shout out to this audio's randomly selected sweetness patron, Sandwich Shenanigans. Thank you so much to all my patrons. You make this channel possible. If you like what you hear, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. 
leave a like, and check out the links in the description from my other channels and ways to get cool perks for supporting me. Thanks for listening.